Umagyan, Timirandasya, Gina Jana Salakaya, Chaksu Un Militam Yena, Tasmai Shri Guruveda Maha, Shri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapti Tam Yena Utala Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swampadati Kam. Pandeham, Shiguro, Shi Yuta, Padekamalam, Shigurun, Vaishnavamscha, Shi Rupam Sagrajatam, Sahaganath, Raganatam, Vitam, Tam Sajivam, Sadvaitam, Sarvadutam, Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha, Krishna Padam, Sahagana, Lalita, Sri Vishakam, Vitamscha, Hey Krishna, Karuna Sindhu, Dinavandu Jagatpate, Gopesha, Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta, Namostute, Tapta Kanchana, Gaurangi, Radhe, Vrindavane Swari, Prishavanu, Suti Devi, Pranamami, Hari Priye, Panchakalpa, Tarubhascha, Kripa Sindhu, Pehebhacha, Patitanam, Pavane, Vyo, Vaishnave, Vyo, Namaho, Namaha, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauramani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Sutarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hmm. So, um, the living entity, part and parcel of Krishna, the eternal, fragmental, Mamai Vamsa, Jiva Loke, Jiva Bhuta Sanatana, Masastana Yandriyani, Prakriti Stani Karshati, in the uh, 15th chapter, uh, Krishna explains that the living entities in this material world are my parts and parcel and are struggling hard with the material energy which includes the mind. Hmm. So this struggle comes by the living entities, uh, what they call the, the initial mistake, which leads to 100, 100,000 mistakes. <laughs> you make one big mistake and then after that it's all mistakes. <laughs> It's just like when you try to do a mathematical equation and at one point you add 2 and 2 is 5. And then you continue to do your mathematical equation and everything else is wrong because there's a basic flaw in the whole mathematics because of a mistake somewhere in the calculations. So we calculated somehow that we, we could be happy without Krishna. <laughs> Somehow we, there was that calculation. No one knows how that calculation actually manifested. There are many scholars, saints, academicians, uh, philosophers, spiritual uh, experts who cannot really give a clear understanding, although we say that, that the living entity misuses his material, I mean his uh, independent nature, and by that misuse, he comes to the material world. Coming to the material world, he accepts a body. As it mentions in the scriptures, the body is simply an external feature of living in this material world. Just like in the winter time, you need a coat because it's cold out. And so in the material world, you need a body. <laughs> but you can't really function here. So we take on a body. And life after life, Mitchi Mayara Vese, Kacho Habu, Bubu Bai, Jeev Krishna Dase, Vishwas, Koli Dal and Dukanai. So from life after life, we go to body after body, making different arrangements to try to enjoy this material energy. So in that attempt to enjoy the material energy, we have so many plans how to do that. So whatever gender we somehow get has nothing to do with who we are. We could be a male in one life, a female another life, a dog another life, uh, an insect another life. Maybe somebody stepped on us one time and here we are. <laughs> so we have so many different kinds of bodies that we've been through, 8,400,000 species of life. 
It says the living entity sojourns through most of the species and finally comes to the human form of life. In the human form of life, his opportunities to enjoy material energy start to expand, along with the opportunities to get out. But because the living entity is so illusioned by this material energy, he doesn't think about getting out of this material energy. He thinks about trying to control it and trying to enjoy it. So Krishna is called Bhokta, Bhoktaram Yagya, Tapasam Sarvaloka Maheshwaram, Suhidam Sarvabhutanam, Shantamam Yansam Vrishtiti. Krishna is the original enjoyer and he is the original controller. He is actually, in one sense, using the right term analogy in terms of definition, he is the only enjoyer. There, there's no second enjoyer, and there is no second controller. So the living entity takes up the position of trying to imitate Krishna in this material world by trying to become the enjoyer and the controller. I'm sorry, the controller and the enjoyer. Because in order to enjoy, you have to have some facilities to control. So the living entity makes plans to enjoy in this world. So he grows up. And he, uh, he takes birth, and he comes out, and he's just passing stool and urine and crying. And his mother is feeding him, and he doesn't know which way to go. He's so stupid. <laughs> he bangs into the furniture. He falls down. He gets hurt. His mother tries to help him. And so in this babyhood, he's struggling somehow or other to, to find some understanding of what, what is all around me. He sees other people, but he's not sure how to identify with them. <laughs> and so in this illusionary state, he simply is, is completely in ignorance. In fact, he's not much better than an animal. <laughs> so in this early part of life, uh, the living entity in these younger forms, finally he grows up a little bit and maybe comes about two or three years old and starts to realize that there's something else besides me in this world. <laughs> And then he thinks, oh, I should either try to enjoy it or wreck it. So he tries to wreck it most of the time. <laughs> so in his, uh, in his, in his uh, attempt to find some meaning in life, he just causes trouble to everybody. <laughs> and so he becomes a problem and therefore he has to be controlled like that. So as he grows up, then he has to go to school and... He, he's taught that he has to learn something in order to become educated. So he, he believes this idea that he needs to be educated, although he's a spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna, and he's automatically in full knowledge. But he's, he's told that he has to, or she has to, learn something. So he goes to school, and he learns all things that are completely useless. <laughs> How many people are in China? <laughs> you know. Uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. <laughs> so he learns the alphabet and he thinks he's educated. So in his, in his attempt to somehow or other um, grow up, he's learning all kinds of things. And he's going to a school. He doesn't like school, but he somehow or other, because he's forced to go, he goes. And then, as he grows up a little bit, he realizes there's something besides me in the form of an opposite sex. It's a, called a girl. <laughs> and he thinks, hmm, boy, I thought everybody was like me, but there's something else. There's girls, too. And what are girls? Hmm. Well, they're a little different. <laughs> so he starts to realize that <laughs> there is a, another species on the planet that is a little different than him, but it looks like him. <laughs> Yeah, but she does. she's not shaped the same way. Her form is a little bit different, so he's wondering. And then he starts getting attracted to that. And then, his, then he starts, at 12 years old, his parents sit him down and start telling him, now it's time to learn about life. <laughs> <laughs> so they teach him that you're a boy and there's a girl, and then you, eventually you become like us, you get married, and then you have children just like you. Maybe not like you, but... Hopefully not like you, but anyway. And so then he grows up and then he goes to school and he starts to you know, try to get educated. He works hard, he studies so much. 
he spends all his energies becoming trying to get some kind of knowledge from books that have no relevance to anything in terms of the happiness about life. But he goes through this and then go and he starts to believe. And then he starts looking at the opposite sex and starts thinking, hmm, well maybe there is something there to do, you know. So he gets involved in that, finds a girlfriend, girlfriend, girl finds a boyfriend. They usually don't get along, so that breaks up after some time. <laughs> And then he goes to school, and then he's struggling hard. He tries to be popular amongst his friends. Nobody likes him because he's ugly. <laughs> and so in this way, when he comes home, his, mother, his parents are not happy because he's not getting good marks in school. His teachers are punishing him. He has to stand in the corner for making trouble in the class. So uh, he doesn't like this world, but he goes through it anyway, somehow. And those who somehow or other obey and go through the thing, they just become stupid and just follow. There's a thing called the hundred monkeys. You know the story of the hundred monkeys? Well, one monkey, he scratches his behind. So the other monkey sees that and he scratches his behind. So then the other monkey sees that and he scratches his behind. So finally, when it gets to the hundredth monkey, he automatically does it because all the other monkeys are doing it. It's called the hundred monkeys. Nobody knows why they're doing it, they're just doing it because the other monkeys did it too. <laughs> so that's life in this material world. They tell you you have to grow up, make money, be nice, get a good job, work hard, have a wife, have some kids, have a family, and be happy, live in the suburbs, and uh, join the Lions Club, right? <laughs> so he's going, he going through all this time, wasting so much time, and he's just simply struggling to somehow or other keep up with the, the principles that are governing this material world for happiness and success. So this is his whole life, and, life, and then he just keeps going through that. And sometimes he has some luck and finds a girl he stays with for a few years. <laughs> But usually it doesn't work out because there's too many girls and he's not happy with one. So she throws him out after some time. So he, everyone, he, this is the principle we're trying to explain is that in trying to enjoy this material world, everyone is going through so much trouble. <laughs> so much trouble, so much time, so much energy, so much lamentation just to find some kind of happiness in this material world. He doesn't know that the happiness is already inside him because he is a pure soul, part and parcel of Krishna. Instead of looking inward, he looks outward and sees success in terms of how it's defined by the material energy. And he sees someone, oh, that person has money, that person has position, that person has some abilities. I want to be like that. So he tries to copy the Joneses. He tries to follow those people who are defined by society as successful. So in his whole life, he's going through that. Uh, sometimes there's some success, sometimes there's some failure. His happiness is on the weekend, so he can turn on the television and watch the sports. <laughs> or go to the bar and get drunk and forget about all his problems. So this is, uh, and so in this life, and then at the end of the life, finally he dies and takes birth again. But this time the birth is not so good. <laughs> so life after life, the living entity goes from one situation to another in this material world, trying to manipulate the material energy to enjoy. Not knowing that all he has to do is turn his face to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is his eternal lover, parts and parcel, best friend, protector, well-wisher, an eternal guide. He forgets about that, and then he simply looks for all these things in the material sense. He looks for protection, happiness, guidance, love in this world where there isn't any. And therefore, life after life, Mitche Maya saying life of like the living entity is simply struggling somehow or other to find a little bit of pleasure. And if he gets a little bit of pleasure, he thinks, oh, it's not so bad. It's like the example of the man 
He's hanging, he falls into the well, and as he's falling down in the well, he grabs onto a vine, and he's holding onto the vine, and he's somehow dangling there. So in the, as he's hanging in the well, he noticed at the bottom of the well there's a large snake. And at the top, now a lion, has, a tiger has come to the top and is looking down. So he sees a tiger on the top, a snake on the bottom, and then he's holding onto this vine. And then there's two rats, one black and one white, who's chewing on the vine that he's holding onto. <laughs> and at the same time, there's a honey, there's a nest of bees in the, hun, in the, in the well. It's a little higher up than he is, and it's dropping honey. So he thinks he, he sticks out his tongue to catch the honey. And he's thinking, boy, this is really nice. <laughs> So that's material life. So these two rats, one black and one white, represents day and night. As the living entities, are, day and night is chewing away the life of the living entity. And soon he will fall into the well and be devoured by the snake of death. And when he gets old, see, whatever he's successfully done, he thinks, oh, I've not finished my business. The children are not nicely situated yet. The, I still have some plans yet. And he's lamenting that he has to die because he's old and he can't do anything. So he, he surrounds himself with family members and tells them, gives them all kinds of instructions what to do, even though he's not going to be around to see what happens. <laughs> and then finally, you know, he coughs, he chokes. He, uh, he screams because he sees the Yamadutas coming <laughs> to take him away. So as it says, life sucks and then you die. <laughs> so this is the material world. So that little bit of honey, what is that little bit of honey that drops there? It's called society, friendship, and love. They call it family life. A little bit of pleasure in the family, which makes one forget about the real pleasure. It's kind of an illusionary pleasure that covers over the real pleasure that's available in our relationship with Krishna. And so that little bit of pleasure is like, it's like the intoxication that one receives from a drug. But soon the intoxication wears off and then one comes to the reality that I'm not happy. <laughs> So therefore, it says that the material, in the material world, you have to make everyone believe you're happy. <laughs> it's a show. <laughs> you have to look happy and act happy because you have to convince two people. One, yourself. <laughs> and the other one is the other person who you're with. <laughs> that you're not only happy, but you're actually successful. <laughs> Of course, every time you look in the mirror in the morning, you start to realize how miserable you are. <laughs> and uh, you also would think, you know, boy, I'm growing old. <laughs> but, and that's okay, because when I get old, the life will get better, but it doesn't. <laughs> the, plan, the plans of the few, the stupid materialists is that it's not so good now, but it's going to get better. <laughs> It's always going to, the future is always going to be bright because I plan it that way. <laughs> but there used to, there's an old saying, trust no future no matter how, you know, how nice it appears to look like that. So in this way, life after life, the living entity goes through various types of attempts to be happy in this material world. But he has nothing to do, or she has nothing to do with this world. This world is like, it's like a punishment for leaving Krishna. It's a jail cell. And you get a uniform. It's called man body and women body. This is your, this is your prison uniform. <laughs> so you might have a Slovenian uniform or a Croatian uniform or a U.S. uniform. But you get different kinds of uniforms and you think, oh, it's not so bad. My uniform's better than their uniform. <laughs> So in this material world, everyone is just really, it's a farce. It's, a real, it's actually a big joke. <laughs> because the living entity has nothing to do with this world. He belongs in the spiritual world with Krishna and loving devotional service. He comes into this world of make-believe and tries to create some reality out of where there is no reality. 
So this whole world is ephemeral. Just like so in, just like in, when we go to sleep at night, we dream. So when we dream, we actually go into another reality, and then sometimes we actually identify and feel experiences by that reality. But then again, we wake up and we say, oh, well, that's only a dream. So this, this night dream is there, but then there's this, this waking state of consciousness is another form of dreaming. We're dreaming. I'm in the Slovenian. I'm a man. I'm a woman. I'm happy. My name is Alex. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we get so many names. Sometimes we don't like our name. <laughs> My parents gave me this terrible name. Therefore, I'm not talking to them anymore. <laughs> So, the material world is one disappointment after another. So, so, one keeps trying to adjust the material energy to find some happiness. But it's like being on the Titanic ship. When the Titanic left Southampton in, in, in the coast of UK and came across the waters, finally almost reaching the America, it hit this giant iceberg. Now, there was more than 1,200 people on that boat. The people on the bottom, who were more or less aware of what was happening, started to become really panicking. We were seeing that the iceberg was coming and there was no way to stop it. The people on the top were dancing, having a party, singing, and enjoying all kinds of food. So then when it hit, the people on the body, bottom realized we're really in trouble and started to you know, pray, do all kinds of things. But the people on the top were still dancing. So if a person thinks, well, you know, I'm on the bottom, it's better on the top. So let me go to the top. <laughs> but the thing is, both places are going to go down. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> Prabhupada uses the example of the, the cow dung. The cow dung is dry and the cow dung is wet. So the cow, the, the, the wet cow dung was laughing at the dry cow dung. Ha, 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 you're going into the fire. <laughs> But soon he'll dry out and he'll be there also. So this is the material life. So so people who are young they think, oh yeah, young. That's you guys are old men. You guys are useless. You know, <laughs> we're young. Young means fun. <laughs> but sooner or later that youth runs out, and then of course everyone realize comes to the reality that death is coming up sooner or later. And therefore, as Shakespeare says, there's the rub. <laughs> everything, every, everything is law. Prabhupada said, your home, your body, your friends, your family, your wife, your money, your ideas, everything finished. Boom. <laughs> so an intelligent person realizes the only, the only thing you want, I have to do, just like if you go to jail, you don't think, well, if I'm in jail, I'm going to make a nice jail cell here and then get the best TV and get, you know, get some good kind of jello so I can enjoy in a jail. Now you think, let me get out of this place. <laughs> so that's a devotee. A devotee and one who is a devotee means one who knows, who has knowledge that this place is not meant for my existence. It's simply a place of suffering. I have nothing to do with it because I'm not this body. The body, as soon as you get a body, you're connected to the material energy. The idea is to come to the platform where the soul no longer takes bodies. And that means freedom from all desires to enjoy this material world. And again, devotional service to the Lord. So uh, when the living entity comes to that state of awareness, then he starts to make his to trek out of this material world and eventually go back to the spiritual world. The spiritual world is the reality. The reality means something that doesn't change. This world is no, there's no reality because everything has changed. Just like, you know, you, you find a beautiful girl and then after a while she gets old and ugly. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> so it's like what to do. <laughs> Everything you have changes, and even while you have it, you can't figure out how to enjoy it because it's not meant for your enjoyment anyway, because it's Krishna's energy. 
So in this, in this illusion of, of uh, material existence, the living entity is always bewildered, confused, unhappy, disappointed, struggles, fearful, that's the big one, and then, boom, it's all over. Time for the next chapter. Get ready to, for next chapter. Next chapter is, yeah, here he comes again. He's out again. <laughs> Starts all over. Passes his stool and his diapers. His, he smells bad and makes a lot of noise. You know. <laughs> now this is this is the material world. I just gave you a short and slow, very small synopsis of this place. So one who has any intelligence will see that there's nothing here for me. We want to get out and go back home, back to Krishna and enjoy spiritual, uh, real life, where life is eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. That is our nature. The fact that the living entity doesn't want to die indicates that the living entity doesn't die. The fact that the living entity wants unlimited happiness is the indication that there is a place where there is unlimited happiness. So it's not found here. You can't stay here and you can't enjoy here. But because we have these desires, it indicates that there is, these things do exist. The reality is beyond this material existence. So one who is intelligent will not take part in the anything in this material world that somehow Waller binds one to some kind of material activities. One should stay fixed in the process of devotional service, developing their attachment and attraction to Krishna. Attachment and attraction to Krishna is as natural as breathing in this in the material existence. This attraction to Krishna is not something that we have to bring in from somewhere else. It is part of our nature. When you start to experience that attraction and it starts to grow, then you start to realize, yes, this is Krishna is all that really matters. There's nothing else, really. And then you can't wait to get out of this place. <laughs> and then you want to. Then you find when you when your when your eagerness is that you can't stay in this place anymore. You're completely fried <laughs> and you want Krishna only then Krishna says all right you're ready come on <laughs> and then and then you're back with the well actually in the in the principle of tadva you can never be separated from Krishna you're always with Krishna but it's like being in a room where there are so many things in the room, but the, the lights are out in the room and it's dark and you can't see anything. You're in the room, all the things are around you, but because of the darkness, nothing is visible or perceivable. So in the same way, the darkness of material life simply covers the consciousness of the illusion and we think we're separate from Krishna. But Krishna is right there. He's with us every moment, every second, and he's always somehow or other trying to get us out of this darkness. Um, Thomas Imam Jyoti Gama, Krishna says, go out of the darkness and into the light. And again, if you reflect about what this material world is, you can see, what is this world? It's dark. That's all. It's dark and cold. There's nothing to it. The sun, it makes it light and warm. The moon helps also. And we have created electricity. <laughs> but all these things give light to this world. Otherwise, this world is simply a barren, cold, desolate, death-like lump of matter. That's all it is. <laughs> Earth planet is nothing. The life comes from the outside <laughs> only. <laughs> so the... We get so many indications that there's nothing in this world that we can actually relate to. <laughs> but we create these relationships in order so we can become, uh, what we say, convinced that there's something I can be happy here and I can enjoy here, like that. Mm -hmm. It's like the man who's intoxicated 
and he, he's falling down, and he's getting hurt, and he gets up and he says, I feel great. <laughs> now this is the material world. Yeah. And so it says that no sane person would does one wants to stay here. So that enjoying propensity is uh, strong in the living entity. We want to enjoy, not only do we want to enjoy, we want to enjoy constantly. That is our nature. And that, that, that desire to, 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 that place to fulfill that desire is only with Krishna in the spiritual world, nowhere else. <laughs> So sometimes we think, well, because we're so illusioned by this material world, and so we'll be so covered by it, we think spiritual world, yeah, I heard about it. Is it really real? <laughs> I mean, are there like trees that you can just go to and ask anything you want and you get it immediately? <laughs> so we have no... On whatever we read or whatever we hear from the authorities, so that's, that's as much as we know about the spiritual world. It's so far removed from our experience that sometimes we even doubt our own existence. We doubt that there's this place, the spiritual world. That we, we, we might believe that there's a better material arrangement, but we have some doubt. Is it true? I mean, is God a cowherd boy? And he plays with girls, and he steals butter. Come on, this is somebody's ideas. <laughs> so this is due to our attachment and uh, covering of this material energy. We get so far removed, we can't even understand. Uh, illusion seems to be reality, and reality seems to be illusion. <laughs> so therefore, in the, everyone in this material world is. Is, uh, and everybody's a lesbian here. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. Everybody's a lesbian. You didn't know that, did you? Because the soul by nature is female, so all souls are female. <laughs> so we're all lesbians. <laughs> Except that when we connect with Krishna, then we're then we're actually okay. We're <laughs> we're straight. We're straight. <laughs> we're not. We're straight then. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Think about it. It's, every soul is female. That's that's the shastras. Every soul is prakriti. Prakriti means feminine. There is only one male, Purushik. So when two souls in this world get together for loving affairs, it's lesbianism. <laughs> so, all glories to gay rights, right? <laughs> so this is the material world. It's a most ridiculous place. <laughs> if you have to give it a name, it's called ridiculous. <laughs> Everything you learn, everything you do is just it's just some kind of show. It's like a bad bad drama. That's all it is. So we can perform reality even within the illusion as long as we stay engaged in devotional service and stop looking to the illusion for some kind of happiness or some kind of relief or whatever. As soon as we stop looking there, then it, then the reality becomes more desirable, more available also, like that. Hmm. So this is the uh, class I like to give, <laughs> just to uh, just to give us an understanding that whatever we have here is simply something that we've that's been created in order for us to suffer, that's all. <laughs> okay, so. All 
Hare Krishna. <laughs> you have some seva. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's he's good. <laughs> okay. So any questions or comments or criticisms? Any complaints? <laughs> I'm simply giving you the the reality in different pieces kind of thrown together in a somewhat of a scenario. <laughs> See, we have to come to that understanding we have nothing, nothing, zero to do with this place. Nothing. <laughs> we're here, we're stuck, now the idea is to get out. <laughs> so we have to stop making arrangements to stay here. <laughs> Prabhupada talks about Lomasa, and Lomasa Muni. He had a benediction that for every hair on his body, he would live one lifetime of Lord Brahma. And so um, Prabhupada said he was a very hairy sage. <laughs> and so he was living on the banks of the holy river, the Aivshi Panchatattva. And uh, he had a few followers, and so his followers were concerned that their Guru Maharaj didn't have any cottage or any dwelling, so they said to him, Guru Maharaj, can we make you a, a place to, to live? He said, don't bother, I'm not going to be here so long. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to eternity, this life is like a flash. Just like sometimes you see a flash of lightning, it's, you can't even calculate how fast that is. So this life is like a flash. It's not even that that even that fast in in the element of eternity. Eternity can never be understood or calculated or even imagined. What is eternity? That means something that always exists and will always exist, like that. So our existence is eternal. And this world is simply just like a little, you know, flash that comes and goes. So we come and go every life with new bodies, new situations, like that. Life after life. But Krishna is merciful. He sends the spiritual master. He sends the shastras. He sends the himself in the form of his worshipful deity form. He comes in the form of the holy name and he also comes in the form of Krishna Prashadam. All these things are his lifelines for us to somehow or other live in this world and then at the same time get out of this world. So these things sustain us. They make us happy. Chanting, reading, studying, singing, dancing, eating. And at the same time as we do that, we're going, we're, get, we're getting closer to our eternal life, like that. So that's the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's very merciful. So we are uh, indebted to the mercy of the Lord. In other Kali Yugas, aside from this one, the other 999 Kali Yugas, Lord Chaitanya does not appear. Krishna does not come at the end of Dwar Dwarpa Yuga. So those people have to struggle and uh, somehow make advancement mm -hmm. by worshipping Lakshmi Narayan in the mood of opulence like that, which is much more difficult to practice. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's practice is really the extreme manifestation of mercy. Chant, dance, take prasadam, and... Uh, discuss philosophical topics, and uh, like that. Hmm. And eat, yeah. <laughs> Not a night, it's pretty, it's just as this. You can't beat Mahaprabhu's mercy. <laughs> His mercy, even Prabhupada would, would exclaim with such enthusiasm. No one is as merciful as Mahaprabhu. 
he's taking this very difficult process because to go back to home, back to Godhead is not so easy. But he's made it really easy. Mahaprabhu's made it really easy. And he's made it joyful. Okay, anyone would like to say something? Huh? If anybody feels bad about this class, you can see my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? Oh, oh yeah, he's my lawyer. <laughs> lawyer means liar. <laughs> okay. So, so one thing we should always remember that whatever material situation we have, don't look towards other people and say, well, they're better off. I wish I had what they had. Don't, this is the thing that will keep you in the material world. Be satisfied with who you are, what Krishna made you, what you are, and from there make progress to go back home, being back to Godhead. This is the principle of non-enviousness. Because <clears throat> as soon as you become non-envious, you enter into the spiritual consciousness. Prabhupada in one lecture says the difference between the spiritual world and the material world is in the spiritual world everyone's free from envy, in the material world everyone's envious. So he says if you're, if you're non-envious, you're actually in the spiritual consciousness. But everyone is envious because we always feel somebody else is better, some situation is better, I need this. I'm not happy, this, that, this, that, that. Get rid of this and just realize that whatever you are now and whoever you are, Krishna is giving you all the facilities to make advancement back home, back to Godhead in, in the situation you're in. Prabhupada said, everyone has enough, just enough to go back to Godhead. <laughs> So sometimes devotees think, well, I need this, I have to have this, this person's better off, I need this position. I wish I was the temple president, I wish I was not the temple president. <laughs> so I, I wish I was a sannyasi so I can, you know, people will say Jai Maharaj. <laughs> I wish I had a beautiful wife like my friend does, so she could smile at me and I could feel happy. <laughs> so forget all these things. <laughs> whatever you are, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you are, just make progress from there and go back home, back to God. Yes. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Uh, you mentioned that the Krishna is the only enjoyer, the Supreme, and because of our conditioned state, we want to be enjoyer as well. So we are constantly looking for this honey. But uh, in the the honey has bees around it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, in the spiritual world. Uh, it's if we like uh, it's difficult to uh, envision ourselves as an enjoyer if that's why maybe I'm thinking like there's some saying that it's we are more favored to knowing hills than the unknowing heavens something like that that uh, well the propensity to enjoy is 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 sometimes even greater in the living entity than it is in God. That's why God becomes his devotee, just so he can taste the happiness of the enjoyment of being a devotee of the Lord. So that happiness that you're looking for, which is there within your heart, is found when you through becoming Krishna's devotee. And in the spiritual world, that's automatic. So you're so in the spiritual world the Bliss is constantly there within 
the within the existence of all all the residents. That's your name. To be happy is normal. <clears throat> Prabhupada said that if you're not happy, you're in Maya. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> One senior devotee, one time, he came and he fell at the feet of Prabhupada and he got up and he said, Prabhupada, I'm in Maya. Prabhupada said, you're always in Maya. <laughs> That's usually our condition. We're usually always in Maya. Sometimes we think we're Krishna conscious and then that's a problem because it's not true. <laughs> when you're actually Krishna conscious, you will know it. <laughs> It's like that old saying when one person says to the other one, are we having fun yet? Are we having fun? If you have to ask whether you're having fun, that means you're not. <laughs> if, you have to, if you have to ask whether you're Krishna conscious, that means you're not. <laughs> You'll know it when you become Krishna conscious. So your nature is to is to be blissful, prashanatma. The soul is prashanatma. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So we have to go to sleep. That's another botheration <laughs> because we have this body. <laughs> But for the soul, there's no sleeping, there's no eating. <laughs> All the bodily activities that we have to perform in order to maintain the body are simply done as a service and not as an enjoyment. So when, when one has to sleep at night, one should think, oh God, here it goes, six more hours wasted. I could be serving Krishna with these six hours, but I have to take care of this miserable body. <laughs> but then Prabhupada writes in, in, the, in the tenth canto that the gopis, or the residents of Vrindavan, when they go to sleep at night, they only dream of Krishna. So, so they're always with Krishna, either waking in the mood of separation or dreaming of Krishna and, in the sleep state, in the mood of separation. So if you can dream of Krishna, then your sleeping is not so bad. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jaha.